Hey guys, still here and welcome back to War on the Sea. We're in episode 8 and I'm going to start this one off with an encounter. It's ASW Group 2, Anti-Submarine Warfare Group 2, consisting of the Radford and the Jenkins, and they have encountered, well, something. I just don't know what. Could be a submarine, could be a surface fleet, I don't know. Let's have a look. Considering I don't know what it is, I'm immediately going to take evasive action. I'm going to continuously, quickly turn to starboard and see if we can avoid any torpedo launchers or any torpedoes in general. Activate radar and sonar. Let's see if we can figure out what the hell is trying to engage us here. Not seeing any launches. Not hearing any launches. What could be out here? Cannot go to times five, so it's probably a ship. What are we looking for? Or maybe I should pose the question the other way around. What is looking for us? All right, Radford and Jenkins. I want you guys back in the same formation. Uh, line abreast, form up. I'll take control of the Radford, and the Jenkins can just keep following us. What are we hunting out here? Just looking at a sunrise as the battle is going on. Oh, you have to be on the starboard side, do you? Great. After a good while of searching, I have actually no idea what it supposedly was that was out here. Uh, it could have been a submarine, but there was just nothing to be found. Even though zigzagging at slow speed with active sonar in a line, nothing. I don't know what it was that is out here. And that, well, potentially is still out here. Anyway, um, the next objective is to send Task Force 10 back home as Task Force 9 is going to take over Guadalcanal. As the headphone users might remember at the end of the previous episode, I started shelling Guadalcanal with Task Force 10, or well, what's left of it, and that um, <laughs> caused a bit of noise. It's time to get these guys off the ships. The guys from uh, the Type-C3 transport ships and the Cimarron with their fuel, escorted by Warden Astoria, New Orleans and Dale. In the meanwhile, we still have the North Carolina trying to rejoin that group. Maybe not so much this group per se, but rejoin that area of operations. And of course, our poor old Enterprise, still down for repairs. An aircraft spotted near TF-10. Um, maybe we can shoot it down, that would be great, but I'm not sure. I do believe that I have, to, or that I have aircraft of my own. Yeah, I have Kingfisher. I'm not sure if those are armed or not. But I can send this flight up for Kingfishers, and well, who knows? They might be able to take down whatever's out there. So let's begin. So here's my flight of Kingfishers over the uh, Northampton and the McDonough. These things have taken a fairly chunky amount of damage, both of the ships. Although, no, sorry, the McDonough is fine. It's just the Northampton that's uh, pretty scratched. And if we switch to air, you can see the Kingfishers over here. And now we wait and see where that enemy aircraft is. I believe these guys are all... Yeah, they're all lined up on the main Kingfisher. On Kingfisher 1, there it is. Yeah, we're turning to engage. Anti-aircraft guns are opening up from the ships. Because the last thing that I need is for this damaged surface action group to get shadowed by some form of aircraft and potentially worse, shipping. So the plan is to get this thing shot down as quickly as possible. And it's probably gonna move out of range from the flak. But the Kingfisher flight might be able to change the fate of that particular aircraft. I'm not controlling these guys manually because I'm terrible with planes. 
but the AI seems to do a decent job. There's the scout aircraft. So let's see, line up. Try not to shoot your own kingfishers out of the skies. Uh, increase to maximum speed. What? Jeez, how fast are you? You are doing 200. The kingfishers can only do 140. So it looks like unless this boy turns around, I will not be able to catch it. It's just too fast. It's well clear of the ships. These aircraft are doing a very... <laughs> very close formation indeed. Um, but that scout aircraft looks to be getting out of this fight. And as expected, I simply couldn't catch it. So that aircraft gets to leave. Nevertheless, my flight of kingfishers is still up here and might be able to do some scouting for me. So let's switch to here and uh, set these guys on a course. Just scouting around Task Force 10, I believe. Northampton ready to launch aircraft. I doubt that actually, because the aircraft from the Northampton are currently airborne. You're looking at it. <laughs> it's the flight of the four kingfishers. So why exactly the game says, oh, never mind, they're ready to go, I don't quite get. Oh, and we're instantly ready again. Enemy ships spotted near Task Force 9. Uh, that's not ideal, because that is my already, well, pretty vulnerable, oh shit. Yeah, I know who those boys are. Uh, it's my already vulnerable task force here. Let's see if I can quickly offload the troops. Uh, unload all. Nope. Cannot transfer cargo. Enemy nearby. This means that New Orleans, Dale, Warden and Astoria are first going to have to fight off the two destroyers and the two light cruisers that are surviving from the previous encounter. While hoping that my cargo ships don't die. No pressure whatsoever. Unknown location of the enemy. So, I don't know. At least I'm going to have to send the cargo ships that way. Wait, one. New ships bearing 085. Oh, they're east. Right. Okay, that means that the cargo ships are going to break formation and turn west. Uh, back to the map. Turn that way. Turn that way. Turn this way. And turn this way. Get the hell out. The rest of the formation, the New Orleans, the Dale, the Warden, and the Astoria are going to continue on towards the enemy. Which I believe should be pretty easy to identify, as we know who these boys are. This is the group that we spotted previously. So that was two Tenryu classes, one of which already ate a torpedo, but I'm still not exactly sure if that damage translated. This, I believe, was a Fubuki class. Uh, Fubuki. There she is. Target two. Another Tenryu. And there was a fourth. But we still gotta find that one. New Orleans, Dale, Warden, and Astoria. All target the Tenryu. Target one. Engage when ready. We're gonna set a course this way. Enable. New Orleans immediately engages. Firing solution is probably pretty terrible, but going up fairly quick. And we can aid that by making the radars enabled. Warden and Astoria. We're doing a mere 13 knots. I want to increase speed and make this task force as much of a threat to the enemy as possible so that they don't have any opportunity to intercept my very vulnerable cargo ships. Which I should have offloaded, but I was too busy plotting courses for the Kingfishers. Tenryu is doing a mere 5 knots? Solution's 48%. It's really impressive. 50%. I'm turning broadside to ensure that the stern battery can also engage. Seeing any battle damage on either of the Tenryu light class or light cruisers. 
but this one's not particularly in a hurry, is it? Oh. That give me an arrow spread. Seeing as you're only doing five knots, I can pretty much predict where you're going to be within the next few minutes. So let's set some fire on that ship. Manual fire at that. Hit. Magazine explosion on the Tenryu. Or well, one of the Tenryus, anyway. One of the things that could happen is that these guys are going to try and launch torpedoes at me. Because they do carry them. The destroyers even more so. Making them even more dangerous. And I'm really hoping that those are not going to do anything against my cruiser. Well, against my transports. If they try and hit the cruisers, I can easily dodge it. But the same cannot really be said for a transport. Lost it. Range, 8,000 yards. But it looks like the conditions are pretty good. Visibility, 35%. Sure, there is some rain. But with an identification and radar and a decent visual, it all stacks up into a neat firing solution of 54%. So you're engaging. Astoria is engaging. Warden is engaging. And the Dale is back there. Transports seem fine. It's just the Warden that has suffered a hit. And how bad is it? Minor damage and minor flooding to the starboard side of the ship. The Tenryu, however, can probably not say the same thing. She looks to be a little bow heavy at this point. And the other Tenryu... Oh, sorry, this is the lead Tenryu. The other one has also been hit. Inadvertently, actually. Because I wasn't really turking that one, I believe. But of course, any damage that they'll offer, I will happily take. You're dead in the water. I'm going to switch to manual fire again and blow away the Tenryu. Manual fire right there. Now, one thing that I would have done personally different about the game is that I get scored, or I get points, for every ship that I sink. It's... It's an okay way of giving points, but I feel there would be more sense when you would just get a set amount of points per month or per week or per day, whatever you want to call it. Because now it seems like in order for me to, for let's say for the US to build ships, we first have to sink other ships. Our industrial and shipbuilding capability should not be determined by how many ships we've sunk. It's not like, oh, you sunk a heavy cruiser and... Congress is happy and is going to now allow you to buy an additional ship. That just wouldn't really make that much sense to me. Alright, boys. We have a new target, the second Tenryu, because she's getting a bit closer. And I really don't like that. Now, how many Tenryus were there? Because I believe that I've seen these boys before. There were only two. So one's the Tenryu and the other is the Tatsuta. The Tatsuta. And they are both going to find their demise today. Starting with the first one. And the second one is just getting hammered. The fire aboard the destroyer is out. So all ships are looking good. Same cannot be said for the Tenryu. Fubuki looks to have her torpedo launchers looking over to the starboard side. I'm not sure if that means that she's fired or not. It could. Just to make sure that if they did, it's no longer a threat. I'm going to set some maneuvers. And start changing course with both the New Orleans, the Warden, the Astoria. And back there, the Dale. Which thankfully did not collide with the transport ships. How are you doing? Not so hot, huh? That's my solution. 42%. It's not being helped by the fact that I'm turning around a lot. In order to throw torpedoes. Yeah, Warden's increasing speed. Astoria's increasing speed. Everything's trying to match the speed of the New Orleans. With all the damage that she's taking, I think she's going to be down pretty soon. 
Fubuki doing 19 knots at 5,500 uh, yards. And Matsuki, 5,500 yards, 19 knots. Oh, sorry, I'm looking at the firing solution for the Tenryu. Fubuki is doing 24 knots. And the Matsuki, 26. Fast boy. Come on. Put her down. She shouldn't need that much more convincing. Speed's 10 knots. How fast can they go? It's probably a lot more than 10 knots. 10 knots is not great for a warship. Where are you? Here you are. 33 knots is what they can do maximum. There's 337 people aboard that ship. And um, I don't have anything against them personally, but their fighting capability needs to be reduced to nothing. And it looks like that is in fact happening right about now. Let's turn back to port a bit more. Zigzag, confirm. Range from the New Orleans to the Tenryu here is only 4,000 yards. Good hits. Ship is basically sunk already. I'm going to switch fire with the whole group to the Fubuki. Because I think the Tenryu is just going to sink all by herself. She won't need any more help. There she goes. Now, the Warden has taken a scratch. Minor damage. Speed is impacted somewhat. But it seems like this damage is perfectly safe. Well... <laughs> No damage is safe, of course, but I mean, it can be restored. The Fubuki is a whole different beast. Nevertheless, we already have a firing solution of 50%. Now, I don't think I need armor piercing on this thing, so let's switch to high explosive. Good damage to the bow. There's another hit. It seems to be a smaller hit, potentially 5 inch. So maybe from the Warden or the Dale. Or maybe from the secondaries. No, what do we have here? What do you throw out? 5-inch secondary gun. Yeah, it is a 5-inch secondary. Okay. She already looks to be dangerously deep in the water. How's the Mitsuki? Steady on, 18 knots, course, 313. Range 3700. Look at the smoke on that. I think she's done for. There we go. Alright, the last of them. And once they're done, we should be able to take Waddle Canal for ourselves. Finally. The music on this game is still really, really good. Hit. Now, one thing I'm not 100% on is whether or not the Fubuki that just sunk was launching torps. If she was, then that could be a problem. But I think that she never got the opportunity to do so. Or maybe, well, she got the opportunity, she just didn't take it. Range from the Warden is only 3,000 yards to the Matsuki. And is it necessarily Mitsuki? Probably not. There was probably more than one ship in that class. The Mitsuki had a whole bunch of ships. Mitsuki, Kisaragi, Uzuki, Satsuki, Minazuki, Fumizuki, Nagatsuki. Uh, the Kikuzuki is unavailable. So maybe that is a ship that I've already sunk. Mikazuki, Mochizuki, and Yuzuki. Lots of Zukis. And it looks like this thing can be scrapped from the register, because she is done for. And that means that the battle has been won. 21 command points gained. Uh, minor damage only to the Warden. All the transports are perfectly fine. Sunk two Tenryus, the Fubuki and the Mitsuki. And uh, let's take Weddle Canal next. Unload all. I want to unload the troops. No, not from New Orleans. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Um, from the Type C3. 
No, stop. Sorry, we offloaded them. There we go. We offloaded them. There's still a lot of troops here in Guadalcanal. So these guys are going to have a bit of a fight on their hands. And considering Task Force 9 doesn't really have that much to do at the moment, I'm going to bombard. So brace your ears. And again. And again. Now we're going to get this Task Force out of here. Rapido. Because that should have caused a lot of damage to Guadalcanal and hopefully allows my troops to do better. Enemy ship, or sorry, enemy aircraft spotted near TF9. I'm going to ignore that because we're already on the way out. Gato is still scouting. TF9 is still scouting. Task Force 8 is almost at the Rental Islands. And soon we'll also have the North Carolina back in the AO here. Which will make me feel far safer in the case that we're dealing with other ships. Enemy ship spotted near TF-10. Really? Oh, here we go. The McDonough and the Northampton are going to have a fight with a submarine. Let's begin. I don't exactly know where the sub is, so I'm assuming I'm already being torpedoed. That means we're going to do a hard starboard turn. U2, engage sonar, radar is not that required. It's just going to be the McDonough that has to take the, uh, the submarine out here. So we're going to slow you down to a mere 15, 14 knots, something like that. I believe it was between 10 and 14 knots that's the most efficient to deal with enemy subs. Increase speed on the Northampton. Visibility, at least, is really good. Yep, there they are. Right in front of me. Hold on a moment. That means that this ship should be fine. McDonough, with some course correction, can be fine. Uh-oh. That got real close, but not close enough. Jesus, cue the torpedo beads. Look at that. Evasive action confirmed. So, tracing that line back tells me that the submarine is right about there. So time for the McDonough to make her move. This means that I'm going to pull the Northampton out of here at best speed. Because she does not have any kind of anti-submarine capabilities. So you're just going to head this way and make it fast. And the McDonough, we're going to take on a submarine. Currently doing 19 knots. That's too fast. 13 knots. 12 knots. Actually, no. I can, for now, speed up a little bit. Because right now it would allow me to get closer to the submarine. Which I think is somewhere at or near the position of the Northampton. Because that's more or less where the torpedoes originated from. So I want to race to that position and then slow down. How many depth charge we carry? 60. It's sea state 6. I'm not sure how much that's going to impact our ability to find this submarine. But it's probably not helpful. That's for sure. Trace the line back. Yeah, she has to be around here somewhere. Start slowing down. Stop our sprint. Start, start our search. Fortunately, that enemy submarine is going to have to take a long-ass time to reload. So we just need to find it. Bingo! Hello there. Jesus, you're close. What's the range? A hundred yards? Good lord. Commence depth charging. Hello. Kill that asshole. 
That looks good. Lost line of sight, yeah. But that is not a happy submarine. Stop. Still got 42 depth charges left. I'm going to make a hard turn to starboard. And hope that I damage the enemy sub hard enough so that it's going to force her to surface. Of course, I don't exactly know if she will. Northampton is running away at best speed. Madonna, come on. Complete your turn. Contact submarine bearing 131. Not really, though. Steady. She should be somewhere here. Come here. I don't care whether it goes all the way down or all the way up. I want it dead. So long as it just doesn't stay underneath the waves. I mean, if she sinks to below crush depth, perfect. If not, then really her only other recourse is to surface. Where are you? One sinking. That's the enemy submarine. Good night. We got her. Well done to the McDonough. And thanks to all of you for guiding me through this submarine encounter, because without the comments, I probably would have messed this thing up again. Enemy submarine sunk. Three and a half thousand and sixty five sorry, thirty six hundred and fifty tons. Two command points gained. No damage to any of my ships. But the moderate damage to the Northampton, of course, sticks. So, time to get these guys back to base ASAP. With this, I'm going to end the episode. Um, quite an eventful day. We are still trying to capture Guadalcanal, but it does not look that good. We might need more. And, uh, oh, hold on, come to think of it. I still have cargo on these ships, don't I? Yeah, not really, though. Did I drop off my supplies? Over there? Because that would be a bit silly. Huh. Well, I guess we'll figure that out next episode. For now, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the fights, and I'll see you soon for the next episode.